week on the Starting Over Stronger podcast, I'll be interviewing fellow CDC, Jennifer Medwin. We want to help you discover what positive affirmations are and how to use them daily to create more empowerment, more love, better health, and a greater sense of well-being in your life, especially as you face, endure, or recover from divorce. I hope you'll join us. Welcome to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where you'll find health and hope for your divorce survival and recovery. Divorce well, live well. Welcome back to the Starting Over Stronger Show, where we are bringing you content to help you as you go through divorce and to encourage you as you are recovering from that major life transition. And today will be no exception. I have joining me today, fellow certified divorce coach, Jennifer Medwin, and she and I are going to talk today about positive affirmations so that you can explore what they are, how to use them and what results you can expect in doing so. So welcome to the show, Jennifer. Thank you so much for having me today. I appreciate it. Thank you for being here. Let's start with you telling us just a little bit more about who Jennifer is. Who Jennifer is, it's a great question and one that I encourage your listeners to keep asking themselves as they move forward in their process. So my name is Jennifer Medwin and I live in Miami and I have um, a divorce coaching and mediation practice. I also um, just published my first book. Congratulations. Thank you, which is about how to move forward in the process. And I love working with individuals who are in high conflict, who want to divorce in a healthier, more productive way, and to help empower them through the process. Very good. Well, there's definitely a need for that. I'm sure you know that, (laughs) you know, divorce doesn't have to be so position based and the more amicable we can um, create for the process to be the healthier and better off everyone. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I agree. And in fact, that's a great segue because today we're going to be talking about positive affirmations and The reason they're important, because so much of how we interact before, during, and after divorce has to do with our mindset. And a lot of us went through things maybe in childhood or maybe even just in the marriage that have really kind of disrupted that foundation that we have of who we are and how we believe about the world and other people. And who doesn't want to create more love and health and and well-being and and just feel good in their life. And that's really what positive affirmations are all about. I definitely believe there's a lot of power in them and it really doesn't matter what I believe. Science backs that as a fact. And so talk to us a little bit about where you come from with your clients with regard to positive affirmations and the science behind that. Anything you want to say about that part of it? Well, thank you. What I want to first say to everyone is that so many of us, especially when we're feeling overwhelmed and very emotional, we sort of just sleepwalk through our lives. And so what I'm asking the audience to do is to really be intentional about their thoughts and to really be intentional about how they are living each moment. So There is a theory, it's called the the empowerment dynamic. And basically what that means is you're either a victim or a creator. In any situation, whether it's divorce, bankruptcy, disease, so on and so forth, there are only two choices in every challenge, okay? Are you going to be a victim or are you going to be a creator? So what I am encouraging the listeners to focus on is how can you become a creator, okay? One of the ways to become a creator and to bring in more positivity and 
energy into your lives is using positive affirmations because the way we speak to ourselves matters. The words we use matter. They help to either empower us or disempower us. And as soon as we become aware of the script of our internal dialogue, the more content and fulfilled we will all feel as we move forward in our lives. Yeah. And you know, one of the most, I think, helpful things that I've ever heard about affirmations is that you have to really recognize that it's not a choice of whether or not you're going to do affirmations. It's a choice of what kind of dialogue you're going to allow to run through your mind all day, because the default position is negativity. That's right. And so if you aren't intentionally creating positive influence into that, it's going to be negative. And that's true for all of us. I, even if, I think even if you were brought up by the most you know, positive people in the world, Mm -hmm. you would still probably struggle just because life presents challenges in in every way, shape and form throughout our lives. And those create these dialogues and scripts that we have in our brain that most people probably honestly aren't even aware of. And so they're happening, whether we acknowledge them or not. And so it's not a choice of whether you're going to do affirmations. It's a choice of what you're going to allow to be prevalent in your mind throughout the day. For sure, for sure. And setting the intention to become more aware, right? Setting the intention to become more aware of the words you use your and your internal dialogue and what you allow yourself to take in is so important. Yeah. And that's why I really encourage individuals, even from their onset, Like I just finished with a client and we were talking about how she gets up at the same time every day at seven o'clock. And I suggested to her, well, how about setting your alarm with an affirmation every morning? The same affirmation that would really start your day off in a positive way. Yeah. And she went through a series of, of options and she came up with, I am a creator. And yes, she is a creator and we are all creators. And what better way to start your day by feeling empowered that you can make positive choices for yourself. It's within your control, right? Mm -hmm. Because really at the end of the day, the only control any of us ever have is how we react and respond to situations, right? Right. You can't control the situations. You just can control your reaction or response to it for sure. And, And, you know, some of this might seem like a huge undertaking. It might seem daunting to some people to think about doing positive affirmations. And maybe other people think it's a little funny or woo woo or, you know, just really silly to do it. But I think you have to just recognize again that you are doing it and it's unconscious and you can override that unconscious programming even just a little bit at a time. Begin with little things daily, or like you said, pick one, pick mm-hmm. one affirmation. Uh, I think I recently heard if if you had to choose just one, I am enough, it would be a great one because it it, it has such broad application to our career and our family and our marriage or whatever it is that, that we're facing in life that just recognition that we are enough, we're doing enough, we're, we're good enough. You know, there's just such a feeling sometimes that we struggle with not being enough, not doing enough, not being smart enough, you know, how mm-hmm. fill in the blank enough. <laughs> and, right. and so if you had to just choose one, then there you go, use, use that one. But, but also like um, Jennifer said, just think about which one really resonates the most with you and just choose one and put it somewhere prevalent. You know, maybe it is your, your wake up ringtone, or maybe it's a, a card that's stuck on your bathroom mirror or on your dashboard in your car. Or, you know, it could be something very simple. It could, I, I like going onto the internet and finding a pretty image that has mm-hmm. the affirmation and making that like my screensaver, my background on my phone. So every time I turn my phone on, I see it. So great suggestions. Those are really, I, I love incorporating images 
Because, you know, when you incorporate different senses, it helps you to really internalize it. I will also say that affirmations are very powerful, particularly after the words I am. Mm -hmm. Okay. People who study affirmations say anything that follows I am is. So I am beautiful. I am loving. I am enough. I am a creator. It, they're very it's very easy to continuously you know repeat and i will say that and, and i want to go back to this cuz you said something that was so important and, and 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 so true that as a society we we are constantly judging ourselves right are we better than enough are we less than enough are we enough and really you know it's called the mindset of scarcity right? We're coming from deficits always, you know, and I never, I don't like to use the word always, but so let's say frequently, right? Too often. (laughs) Too often, right. And really sort of altering that mindset and really focusing on sufficiency, right? Where are we sufficient and good enough, right? And, And to start thinking about ways that we can create that sufficiency in our lives and to focus on the sufficiencies, right? And I think that the more that people become aware of their ability to shift their mindset, the more they'll do it. You know, there's a saying, practice makes better. Mm -hmm. You know, I, 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 I encourage my clients never to use the word perfect. And I will use the word never here because I think perfect is a setup. Mm -hmm. There is no such thing as perfect. Yeah. Things are good enough. And what does that mean for you while maintaining a mindset of sufficiency? Yeah, for sure. Well, so let's back up a little bit and just kind of create a framework for what a positive affirmation is. If in case it's not obvious, I think we've shed a lot of light on it already, but it's, it's just more or less a, a statement that you decide that you're going to focus on, on a daily basis or as often as possible with the intention of reprogramming your mind um, to try to encur- encourage and empower yourself uh, with new beliefs and habits. You have to start with your thoughts because that's the nature of human behavior and psychology is that everything begins with a thought and the feeling follows that your actions follow that. And the results of all of that is at the very end. So if you want different results in your life, you have to start by thinking differently. Are you tired of feeling alone and stuck in your current situation? Whether you're in an unfulfilling or toxic marriage in the middle of a messy divorce or maybe still seeking a better life after your divorce, Starting Over Stronger has a support group for you. You'll meet weekly online with a group of women experiencing all the same pain, fears, doubts, and confusion. And you'll leave there each week feeling heard, known, and cared for. You will come to understand why you are where you are and how to move toward happiness and fulfillment, feeling supported. Don't put it off another day. Go to startingoverstronger.com now and click groups in the menu bar. Get registered. And for just $88 a month, you'll start this week being a part of an amazing group of women whose presence and affirmation will help you feel less alone and stuck and more clear and confident come what may. What kind of description do you give people when you're defining a positive affirmation? So I think it's also important to identify what your goals are, right? And at different times, there are different goals. So Attached to those goals is a great way of creating affirmations and affirmations, you know, are, are ways it's like protein, happy protein that you ingest or digest so that you can feel more empowered as you move through the day. And I will say one thing to the listeners, and, and I just learned this the other, the other day, a couple of weeks ago, actually, even in the word empower. The first two letters, if you turn them around, say me, Mm -hmm. me power. And that's exactly what affirmations are. They're 
again, like protein, food for your soul to help energize you. It, they are the gas that you put in your gas tank to keep your car moving. Mm -hmm. And the more you develop an appetite for feeling energized, the more encouraged you will be to use affirmations to help propel you forward. Yeah. And, you know, in, in speaking about affirmations, my clients often say to me, well, you know, I'm so busy. I, I just completely don't remember how to, how, when to use them, how to use them, when practice the pause so that I can use the affirmations. And, you know, you mentioned some great examples. I also want to say to everyone that there is something called habit stacking. So if you have a habit like brushing your teeth, Okay. I can't expect my 16 year old son to always brush his teeth at morning and at night, but most adults, we can assume that we do that. Right. So that's a great way to start setting the intention of using affirmations. So for example, in the morning, while you're brushing your teeth, that could be a great time to set the intention of using an affirmation. Great use of your time because, you know, studies show that when we're brushing our teeth, we're, we're either rehashing the past or forecasting the future and we're not present. Yeah. And so it being in the present time is where our power is. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so you, you know, creating, if, if, if it's a habit, if you go running every morning or you drink a cup of coffee, that's a great time to introduce the affirmation. Um, and another time is also right before you go to bed at night right? Or right, you know, when you're brushing your teeth in the evening. And I recently started using this um, technique. It's called the glad technique. Have you heard of it? Mm -mm, I don't think so. Yeah. And I really love it. I think it's very user-friendly and I've gotten great feedback on it. So the glad technique is something that you use towards the end of your evening as you're settling down. And it's one thing that you're grateful for during the day one thing that you learned, one thing that you want to acknowledge about yourself, i.e. using affirmations during the day. Mm -hmm. And the last one is what you're determined to do the next day. A small little intention that you know that you'll succeed. Mm -hmm. And it's it, it, it invites positivity and it's a great way to close out your day. Yeah, I like that. That's awesome. The glad technique. I think, yeah. And I think, you know, you, you hit on a couple of things, goals and, and habit stacking. And with goals, I will say that I think is just a great place to start to determine what would be good affirmations for you, you know, because it depends on what you're trying to create in your life. You know, do you want to manifest more money? Do you want to attract a romantic partner into your life? Do you want to lose weight or exercise more, do something different or better in your career? It, you know, you have to think about those kinds of goals in order to really kind of conceptualize what it is that you want to focus on in your affirmations. And then the habit stacking, I think is important because, you know, it, if you don't have the thought to, to say these things to yourself, then, you know, you can have all this great intention around it and it just not happen. What I have done that has been really helpful for me is I found an app and it's called Think Up. I think it's like all one word, Think Up. Um, and it is a really cool app. It's free. And it you go in and you can either select from a bunch of different lists of positive affirmations that have already been pre-written by different authors and people that are thought leaders in the world of, of uh, positive um, personal development, or you can write your own. And then once you write them or select the ones that are pre-written, then you can go in and just um, record yourself saying them. And wow. then from there, you can add background tracks. So it could be maybe binaural beats or some kind of, you know, meditation oh, music, yes. or it could be your favorite song, you know, whatever it is, 
you put what you want in the background and then each day or however often you want to do it, you go in and you put it on play and it puts the background music. You can even adjust the volume of the music to the, to the voice at whatever ratio you want. And then you just listen to it for however many minutes per day. I gen- generally tend to do that when I'm getting ready in the morning, I'll have it playing. And so for at least 10 or 15 minutes every morning, I'm hearing my own voice say these things to myself. And, you know, you mentioned earlier the the more senses you can involve into something, the more your brain absorbs it. And so imagine that you're, you're actually talking to yourself and saying these new thoughts to yourself. And so it's a really cool app. And I don't think it's the only one, but it's one that I found that I'm really enjoying. Oh, thank you so much for sharing that. See, when I go through my GLAD technique tonight, uh, this is what I've learned. Thank you. Yeah. 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 There you go. <laughs> Great. And I well, love learning new things. Yeah. Your divorce is almost final. Now what? Do you want to make sense of the past so you don't repeat it? Maybe you're tired of feeling ashamed for what you've allowed in your life or the mistreatment you have tolerated in your marriage or for the fact that divorce is a part of your journey at all. Have you ever thought about making yourself a priority in your new life, but immediately worried you were being selfish? Maybe you're ready to break free of all the emotional ties to your ex and the unfulfilling or toxic relationship patterns of the past. I invite you to experience all this and more at the November 6th to 11th Starting Over Stronger Retreat in the perfectly peaceful Cedar Crest Retreat Center in Pleasanton, Kansas. On your Starting Over Stronger Retreat, you'll receive the rest you so desperately need, the silence and solitude along with the tools that allow you to reflect reframe and reset after your divorce so you can shift away from self-defeating and limiting beliefs and behaviors. You will gain authenticity, confidence, clarity, and grace. Having learned my favorite proven techniques for a calmer, more centered head and heart space, and you'll be surprised how easy this transition can be and how amazing it feels. So don't miss out. Being an intimately sized venue, this event will sell out. Find out more now at www.sosretreat.com. I'm looking forward to meeting you there and transforming with you. And, you know, obviously there's, uh, there's brain science behind all of this. So what you're not a doctor and neither am I, but what have you heard about the actual brain science of the uh, potent effect that these affirmations have on our brains? Well, you know, the, like I said, in the beginning, the words we use matter and they either help to empower us to move forward or disempower us, right? Where we remain as the victims. And so, you know, through there's through neuroplasticity, the more we can rewire our brains to encourage us to be creators and to be more positive and to seek out the blessings in our lives, mm-hmm. the more positivity we will have in our life. It's, yeah. it's training, it's a muscle. We're working the muscle and the more we train the muscle, the stronger it will become, right? In the beginning, it takes a very conscious effort. And then as you develop and as it becomes a habit, it becomes more instinctual Mm -hmm. and it become, you know, you'll be able to just, it will just come to you. Yeah. Yeah. And we've known about this forever. We didn't have words like neuroplasticity, but we had the little engine that could. Yeah. And remember, he said, I think I can. I think I can. And, you know, it really is true. If you think you can do something, you can. Mm -hmm. If you think you can't, then you won't. You literally will decapacitate yourself from that by believing it. No, and for sure, you know, and going back to words matter, you know, it's really setting the mindset of, you know, is something an opportunity or a burden, right? And how are you looking at it? And maybe the affirmation could be, I am going to remain open. Open to what? Open to shifting my mindset to look for the blessings 
and not the deficits, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, that's that's really important, and really it helps in championing your own authenticity. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I, if there is a downside to affirmations, it's what it's what we're saying that you know if you if you don't be intentional about altering the the positive flow of information through your brain you will just set yourself up for repeated failures because your brain will default to negativity and, you know, kind of almost like that bully in your own head that's that's telling you, you can't do things. And until you're aware of it, you can't change it. But once you're aware of it, you have to change it or it will, it will be what it, what you believe. Or you will remain where you are and there is no change that occurs in the comfort zone, mm-hmm. right? It's only when you step out of the comfort zone that that growth takes place. Yeah, and it's not a it's not a race. It's a marathon. It's taking brave bites forward. Yeah. It, it's I think what we are encouraging the listeners to do is just think about it and and be willing and open to setting the intention of using positive affirmations to help energize you and propel you in a positive forward motion. Yeah. And I think we've, we've covered pretty much the general sense of what a positive affirmation is, but I think to get more specific, I think it's really important to help people frame how to actually write an effective positive affirmation, because there are some clear rules and, you know, there's a lot about it that is just free flowing, do whatever works for you. But there's some things that we know from the brain science that works better than others. And one of them you've already mentioned, and that is starting it with, I am. Mm -hmm. And another one is to keep your affirmations in the present. So, you know, I am calm or I am centered or what have you, but your brain really optimally responds to positive present tense affirmations. And also keeping them relatively short. Yes. Yeah. Right? So that you can repeat them and not worrying if you're saying the exact same words every time, right? Yeah. Being being open and non-judgmental with yourself. Yeah, that's a good one. Non-judgmental. Yeah. And and on in that way, also you want the words to be positive. So rather than saying don't do something or can't or won't. You want to turn that on its ear and do something, you know, the opposite of that. So rather than like saying, I won't worry, you would say, I'm always calm and trusting of the next moment or, you know, something like that. For sure. And really also listening to your inner whispers, because so often we hear them and we put them on the bookshelf. And, you know, what we discussed earlier is really figuring out what it is you want to work on, what are your objectives, what are your goals, and really brainstorming from from what the objectives or goals are to determine what affirmations would really be most helpful for you in moving forward, right? Because Mm -hmm. sometimes we generalize so much, you know, someone will say, like a client will come in and say, I'm just, I have nothing to look forward to. I'm, I'm so unhappy in my life. Okay, well, what what do you want? Let let's let's put it into their proper lanes. Let's compartmentalize, and then you will notice very quickly, and you'll be able to come up with affirmations that will really propel you in each lane that you're in. Mm-hmm. Ads are so annoying, aren't they? As a podcast listener myself, I know this to be true. However, as a podcaster, I also know they are necessary. It takes a lot of time and expense to put together a podcast that airs every week and comes to you at no cost. As a woman recovering from divorce myself, I know that you understand my time is valuable. And that's why after almost two years on the airwaves and over 100 episodes, I find it necessary to start advertising to make it possible to continue to bring you this quality content that I know you need and want each week. But you can skip the ads altogether. Want to know how? 
Go to patreon.com slash SOS Divorce, and you'll be able to select from three Patreon fan club member tiers that range from just 5 to $10 a month. You'll never miss it, and you never have to hear another ad again. You can also get bonus content, early access to episodes, and more. That's patreon.com slash SOS Divorce, and Patreon is spelled P-A-T-R-E. E-O-N. Thank you for your support of me as I offer support to you. We are all in this together. Another thing that I heard once that I think is really important because it resonated with me personally from an experience that I had early on when I was learning about positive affirmations, I had someone suggest that I create a, an affirmation around a business that we were doing together. And if I recall, it was something like, I am a millionaire or something like that. And I just couldn't get behind that. I was like, yeah. but I'm not a millionaire. So why would I say I am like my, my, just my instinct was that that's not true. And then um, I later had that confirmed. Um, I was doing a coaching certification through the J. J- Shetty um, life coaching certification program. And he was talking about this and he said the exact thing. He said, your positive affirmations must be true. Mm -hmm. So if you want to be a millionaire, then you could maybe say things like, I am, you know, actively taking steps each day to, you know, become a millionaire or something like that. You know, that would be true. And Mm -hmm. your brain can absorb that, but, but your brain will just automatically reject things that aren't true as Mm -hmm. falsehoods. So be careful about that as well. Right. And, and, and just because something isn't right now, doesn't mean it can't be, but to be very specific on if it is an affirmation, how that affirmation will encourage you and give you the energy you need to fulfill that goal, right? So I really like what you just said. And, and you know, and, and I think that the way you reframed that affirmation was very positive and, and encouraging. Yeah. Do you have any favorite affirmations that you use often? Yes. I am worthy of all good things. Not good. I have been saying that affirmation since I was very little. And especially when I'm feeling nervous, like Mm -hmm. before I go to the doctors (laughs) (laughs) for my annual, you know, I'm worthy of all good things. I am going to be okay. I tend to keep all of my affirmations very much in the I am. I don't want your listeners to think that there are not other ways, you know, that doesn't have to have I am. What it needs to be is something that is authentic and resonates with you. What works for me, what works for you can be different and can be just as powerful. Mm -hmm. So it's about sitting with yourself and really in the, in the silence and, and asking yourself what it is you want to achieve and how you think you can get there. And in what, what words could you use to help empower you? as you go on that journey. It's yes. your journey. And I tend to use a lot of I am's as well. I wouldn't say all of mine are. In fact, one of mine that probably isn't even really considered an affirmation, but I've put it into my Think Up app and, and it almost always starts with it. And it's the um, serenity prayer. Mm. because that was really pivotal in my awakening and exodus from a toxic relationship. And so I have that memorized and say that almost every day. And, and that to me is just the summation of just accepting life on its terms and living in the moment and just trusting that everything is going to work out in the end. And, you know, but as far as the way you word your affirmations, you, you may have a lot of I am's and you may have things like my power is unlimited, or uh, I see the beauty in everything. Um, or I, every morning I wake up with thoughts and feelings that are nourishing. There's lots of different ways that you can frame your, your affirmations. So like Jennifer said, there's no right or wrong, but definitely mix in a lot of I am because those are really powerful. Yeah. And, and I want people to understand again, and it's so important. There is not a fixed box on how to create and what 
affirmations are. Yeah. If it makes you feel good, if it empowers you, then it's an affirmation. Then it's an affirmation. Yeah. Good point. Anything yeah. else you'd like to share with the listeners about affirmations? Well, one thing I would like to say is that, you know, I, I we are so judgmental of ourselves, right? And I think it's so important as we move forward, particularly in times of challenge and overwhelm, that we we just sit back and we become aware of how what what is keeping us down and how we can overcome because awareness is the first step. If you have awareness, like an awareness that you haven't been using affirmations and you want to set the intention of putting, you know, using an affirmation starting tomorrow morning, becoming aware you're one third of the way there, right? And there's something called the three A's framework. It stands for awareness, acceptance, and action. Once you become aware that maybe you haven't been using the tool of affirmations, right? Okay. Today's a new day. Tomorrow's a new day. We're going to start using it today. We're going to accept that we're learning a new tool. We're going to put it into practice tomorrow. And that's the action. So the three A's, I call it the three A's of change, right? Awareness is the first step. And so change is always possible. And affirmations are a great way to get you there. Yeah. And recognizing that you have to become aware of something before you can move towards change is a really helpful and non-judgmental way of acknowledging that we, none of us can ever know everything. That's right. Things become a part of our awareness when we're prepared to take action on them. And so that, like you said, is just step one of the process. That's right. And you can do it. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, thank you for joining me today. This has been helpful. I think a lot of people will enjoy um, exploring this idea with us. And it's been a pleasure talking with you about it. Thank you. And I'm grateful that you had me yeah. on your show today. Yeah. So thank you. You're very welcome. Listeners, these uh, seemingly unassuming words that you can enrich your life with uh, will help. It does help. Thousands of people across the world can testify to that. You can do your own Google research and, and very quickly find dozens and dozens of ideas for affirmations and testimonies from people whose lives have been changed by them. So if you need more confidence, more courage, or more happiness, this is a great way to move in that direction. So thank you for joining us today and exploring this with us. And I will see you here again next week for more help as you divorce and hope as you are starting over stronger.